before going to start my session i would i would just like to have a quick overview about yourself like uh, what you are expecting from the session and uh, uh, why you are here for the session and uh, uh, maybe a brief overview about your background no need to say about your experience a little background about uh, 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 your maybe you, you may have ebs experience or a java experience or you are completely new to the it industry or uh, 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 you never worked on any erp applications whatever you have the past background if you tell me about that then we can plan our sessions as per that and uh, we can make it simpler or make it faster or we can plan as per as per uh, 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 your expertise and your understanding okay so yeah anyone can start by yourself and then uh, i'll take a notes on your name Uh, hi, this is Ajwala. Yes, Ajwala. Yeah, I'm actually an Oracle uh, EBS technical consultant and with uh, 10 plus years of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I uh, right now I'm actually looking for something which is I wanted to move into cloud and functional uh, kind of roles, techno functional kind of roles. So, this is a module which I have not worked uh, so far. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jula. Hi, uh, my name is Shiva. Hi, Shiva. Uh, so I work on uh, technical background. I worked on EBS financial sites. Okay. Uh, and uh, currently I'm working on cloud financial side. Okay. Uh, but my next phase is uh, all on uh, So I want to get, uh, you know, uh, attached on payroll and all these uh, HCM modules. Okay. So, which is why I, I joined this course. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Shiva. Okay. Does anyone? Uh, hi, this is Madan. Hey, Madan. Yeah, well, to be frank, I don't have any ERP experience. Okay. I'm working into a, you know, a different a server administration technology. Okay. I would like to have a switch in technology, so I'm just trying this one, you know. I don't know okay. how it goes, but uh, would, would like to see how uh, how the interaction goes and based on it, I just have to decide on that. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Mandan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so does anyone who else want to start up or shall I start the Okay. Hey, uh, Lash uh, is that Lashmi? Uh, yes, it's Lashmi. Okay, uh, Lashmi, my name is Sajil. I think we have done like, uh, um, um, uh, we have spoke before on that. Uh, Leon? Leon, okay. Oh, great. So, great. Okay, so okay. I joined a few weeks, like I think a couple of months back, and okay. uh, um, I think the other trainer, uh, somehow he stopped after two, three days. Okay. Or like maybe a week, so maybe he asked me to join you. Perfect, perfect. Well so the only trouble I have is like I have a hard stop at like uh, 7 uh, p.m. PST. Okay. So the okay. past week I won't be able to join much. But like anyway, you are recording and you'll be posting Absolutely. the video, right? Absolutely. Okay. okay, thanks. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I got a couple of people and... Uh, Two of the people had EBS experience, and one of them had never had ERP experience in working in the survey administration side. So let's say like this: Does anyone have? I mean, does anyone doesn't have any ERP experience before, except from other? Hi, my name is Krishma. I don't have any ERP experience. I'm okay. very new to this uh, course. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Contents and everything. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for confirmation. Okay. Does anyone else do the uh, same? Hi, Lakshmi. Uh, my name is Adish. And uh, I know the Oracle uh, EBS technical mm -hmm. and the uh, cycles like uh, SCM go to CMP 2 p in terms of technical and techno functional. Okay. And some of the HRMS uh, as a technical. 
but okay. not the functional way. Perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure, so thank you everyone. And uh, let me introduce myself too. And uh, as I said, my name is Lakshmi and I have been into this Oracle applications from both Oracle eBusiness Suite and Oracle Fusion applications for the past 13 years. And uh, I moved to Oracle Fusion applications since 2015 beginning and for the past uh, 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 three, three to four years, I'm into the Oracle Fusion applications and I have implemented uh, several uh, HCM modules including the uh, Corichar is must and payroll, absence, compensation, goals, performance management, advanced benefits, tally recruiting and onboarding, and uh, HR help desk. So I have entered several modules and I am, I am more into being in the cloud. I, I handle more of the technical and functional components together. And uh, uh, I am well versed with both technology and functionality as well. And uh, uh, recently we started implementing more into the SaaS platform as well, the integration cloud service, uh, uh, Sova cloud service, and uh, identity management, and several other components too. I will talk about what is SaaS Pass and IES, all these things together. So that's what uh, all my experience is. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, I'm meeting you all today to start with the session. So here is our course contents, what we are going to our in our classes basically so <clears throat> I give a device schedule here and basically we start with the uh, introduction like uh, we will talk about what is cloud applications what is a big overview of the cloud architecture and different ways of uh, deploying the cloud app cloud application uh, sorry fusion applications into the cloud and uh, 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 what are the various services being offered out of the Fusion application, so many more things like that, basically. And after that, I'm going to start a quick overview about the HCM. Basically, in the Fusion applications, we have many applications available. Out of that, our main concern here is human capital management. I will talk about what is human capital management in the fusion applications and or we pick or we about that basically what are the different products available in the human capital management what are the different modules available in the human capital management and how we have to identify that and how we have to learn that that's what i'm going to do and then once you get a brief overview about the quick eagle eye about the fusion and cloud at sim cloud overview then i'm going to start the real implementation if you go to the real implementation how do typically the things will begin that's what i'm going to start it means i'm going to set get started get started in sense once our company decides to go with the fusion application then what is the first step it's going to happen so uh, how the things will begin in any any, any fusion implementations basically we talk about how uh, how uh, administrator in the company can be identified how the first from first email from oracle cloud to our company to further steps we're going to talk about the getting started part and then we typically start about how a typical implementation will begin for that we talk about a functional setup manager functional setup manager is another module available into the cloud which will tell about how you have to begin any implementation. Maybe you have decide to implement HR application in your company. Maybe you have decided financial application within the company. Maybe within the HR application, you want to implement payroll within the company. If you want to implement the payroll, what are the necessary steps you have to follow? And what are the sequence of steps you have to follow? And who should be the owner of what step? We're going to talk about all those things in the functional setup manager module. Once we begin with the implementation, then I will quickly give all the about the page navigations and the functionality, a typical how the pages looks like, how the navigations looks like, what the fusion looks like. So I'll talk about the page navigations and what are the typical ways we can access the pages, reports, jobs, all those things in the page navigations. And once we have that, then I will talk about any implement any fusion implementation we first thing we need is a security 
how we have to achieve the security within the application. What do you mean by the security? Security, nothing but uh, 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 maybe some people should not see some data or some people should access only some set of screens and some people should not access some set of screens. Only few people can run the jobs. Some people cannot run the jobs. To achieve that security, basically, I will talk about what is the security model given out of the Fission applications. And to implement that security model, what are the components we have to learn? And I'm going to talk about different security blocks in the security most reference model and different user types, how to create an implementation user, how to create a functional user, what are the different roles available in the security of the fission application like a data role, job roles, abstract roles, duty roles, aggregate privileges, functional privileges, data security policies. There are many more things. So we are going to learn that in a hierarchical manner so that we can interconnect all this together and we'll learn how to implement security in any of the fission applications basically. That's what we're going to learn. Once we learn the security and once we start the implementation, then I will talk about how to set up the core HR structures into the Fission application, how to implement the core HR structure. Then uh, you are still muting you all. You can unmute yourself if you have any questions. Okay. So once we learn the security, we will learn about how to typically implement core HR into the Fission applications basically. So core HR, nothing but as I said, core HR is a backbone of human capital management. Core HR, nothing but where you set up your enterprise structure, where you set up your, what is enterprise? I want to talk about it. I'm just, I'm just walking through the course contents, what I'm going to teach in the span of the 40, 45 days, which are coming up. So after security, we'll talk about core HR structure. While talking about core HR structure, I'm going to take a hypothetical company. I'm going to create a, create a virtual company and I will show some virtual company. And we are going to implement that company structure within our fission applications or our course classes. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll take some hypothetical company like a, like, like a Reliance example. If Reliance is a, ma is a main company, under Reliance, we have Reliance Industries, uh, 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 Reliance Entertainment, or Reliance Petroleum, or Reliance uh, 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 Mobile. So basically, I'm going to create a hypothetical company, and I will show you what a company will have at any point of time. Like, a, what company can have a legal entities? Company can have a legal employees. Company can have a payroll saturation units. Company can have a cost center. Company can have divisions, departments locations grades positions so basically we create a hypothetical company and based on that company structure we start talking about implementing that into the fission application while talking about that i will talk about the core hr structures how the core hr structures looks like and to implement core hr structures what are the common configurations you have to learn like uh, profile options or global preferences and lookups value sets flex fields, in flex fields, we have the descriptive flex fields, key flex fields, extensible flex fields, all those common configurations will be learned. Once we learn the common configurations, I will start implementing geographies. Geography is nothing but if you want to enter any address of an employee or if you want to enter address of your company, Uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, you are audible. Great. Okay. So, yeah. So, we, I'm going to talk about geographies, how to implement the geography structures within the company because when you enter an address, address has to be validated. Example, if I enter an address in India, any address should not be allowed, right? So, let us say, uh, uh, Egypt core of zip code of Andhra Pradesh should have a list of valid zip codes will be there, right? I cannot enter Delhi zip code in the Andhra Pradesh state. That kind of validation should be enabled within the system so that our HR system will be the tightly coupled and uh, address validations happens properly. So how to implement those kind of validations within our HR applications? For that, I'm going to talk about geography structures, their hierarchies, 
how to load them for USN Canada and how to load them for USN non USN Canada countries basically. So we're going to talk about those uh, uh, those options uh, in the geographies. Okay. So till now, basically, uh, I'll basically what I'm in my classes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say on and off between the technical and functional. Basically, it's all like. Uh, if any typical implementation starts, how do the typical implementation will flow basically? So some of them will belongs to the functional configurations and some of them will be the technology specific configuration. So I will go on and off between the technology and functionality. So example, let us say here I am saying common technologies means these are all more of a technology specific things. Why I have embedded technology specific things here? Basically, once we started implementing the core HR, once we started implementing the common configurations or geographies, next up is to loading the employee data, loading the company specific data into the system. To load that specific data into the system, we should learn about some technologies behind that. Then we can understand how we can use the technology to load data into the fusion applications. Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about common technologies here. Okay, for the people who are not not understanding don't worry we're going to talk everything in detail in later point of time i'm just giving you what we are going to talk in our subsequent classes okay nothing to worry about that we're going to cover from basics and we want to cover in such a way that everyone can understand what we are talking okay so common technologies what they mean by common technologies nothing but what are the reporting tools available into the fission applications or what are the ways of loading the data into the cloud okay while loading the data into the cloud we have to learn few basic fundamentals like a web services web services within web services we have a soap rest and atom fees we have to learn i'm, I'm going to give a brief introduction about that i'm going to tell you how it is going to work and uh, how we have to use that into the cloud and uh, if anyone interested to learn more then we can take that in a separate way so we will i will talk about that and also i will talk about uh, jdeveloper it's a tool where uh, we can develop the uh, fusion specific applications or fusion specific pages and also you can use jdeveloper to consume the web services uh, to work with the web services how to work with that i will let you know and also i'll talk about fusion reporting tools bi publisher and otbi and uh, uh, extracts there are very various reporting tools that are available which i will talk about that in the outbound integrations and there is ess jobs nothing but a concurrent jobs how to create a background jobs in the fusion application how to register a background jobs and how to execute the background jobs and how to secure the background jobs all those things will be covered in the enterprise scheduler service they all comes into the common technologies basically once we understand the common technologies so how to load the data how to pull the data how to schedule the jobs how to interact with the system that typically we are confident enough to start with the remaining functional components into the human capital management so what are the remaining functional components like creating the enterprise structures like creating the divisions creating the legal entities creating the legislative data groups creating the business units creating the reference data sets and all those things we can be created manually or automatically based on some common technologies based on some inbound integration tools we can create them automatically on daily basis or weekly basis or whatever it is so that's where i have introduced these common technologies before then we can decide here how you want to load some set of data not every data has to be loaded example let us say our company has our company uh, is in uh, in our custom up, uh, in custom hr application before moving to the fusion once they decided to move to the fusion they have to move all their hr information into the fusion applications so what they have to move whatever employees are there they have to move to the cloud whatever the jobs they have created in their custom applications they have to be moved to the fusion applications what are the locations they have created into that they have to be moved into the fusion applications to move the whole volume of data into the cloud manually loading manually creating into the system may be difficult that is why we needed tools to do the bulk loading of the data basically that is why we have to learn that 
common technologies of how to do the inbound integrations and how to do the outbound integrations and how to uh, achieve that or how to automate that. Okay, that's why we learn that. And then we will talk about the typical enterprise structures available in the fusion uh, uh, human capital management and how to create an enterprise structures within the enterprise structures. What are the properties available within the enterprise? Uh, like a position management, employment models, how to create a person number, what is a person number, what is a worker number, what is a segment number, what is, how can we duplicate, check the person already available into the application and how to provide access for an employee to access specific screens, how to do the security provisioning for the employee, all those things will be covered into the enterprise structures. And then we'll talk about another important component called legal entities. Legal entities, nothing but through which typically you have, you will be doing most of important stuff. Basically, if you wanted to hire an employee, you have to hire an employee in a legal entity, basically, because a legal entity will tell you what, what salary, what currency you have to get paid because legal entity will derive the legislative data group. So it will tell you which currency you have to get paid or, or uh, what is or how, what should be your person number or what should be uh, uh, what should be your country of uh, work. So many, many uh, important features will be held by the legal entities and we talk about legal entities in detail. And then we talk about reference data sets, which would again brings back the security stuff. And then we go with the workforce structures. Workforce structures basically all any work locations, departments, organizations, divisions, trees, collection agreements, all the important uh, 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 important components of any human capital management comes under workforce structures, which falls once enterprise structures get created. So we talk about locations creations, how to create locations, how to create organizations, how to create grades, salary basis, jobs, positions, what is the difference between job and position models. We talk about all those stuff here. So basically once we go with this workforce structures and enterprise structures, most of the work in the core HR module is done. Okay, most of the things will be most of the a uh, uh, main structure in the core HR will be done and typically it is a system is almost ready to use the core HR functionality. Core HR functionality, how, how you can uh, use the core HR functionality as and when if you could able to hire an employee successfully, then it means your core HR basic structure is get ready. So by this we will, our core HR structure will be ready. And I'll be stress on some more key things in the data loading techniques. Basically, once my example, once my location is structure is created, organization structure is created, department structure is created. Next step for me is to load all the departments into the cloud, all the locations into the cloud, all the organizations into the cloud. That's where this I'm going to talk about data loading techniques here. How many ways we can load the data using spreadsheet data loader, HCM data loader, pay-based data loader, and web services. You can use any of these methodologies to load into the system. And also I'll talk about how we can automate any of these loading techniques into the fission application, basically. Okay. Once the structure is ready, once it is ready, the next step is to configure the system to make the person to get added into the system are managing the personal information of an employee, are, uh, 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 are managing direct reports, are managing senior. There are, there are many other key components available in the Fusion HCM application, which I'll be talking about that in detail. Once we, have, once we cover all that, you will completely aware of how typically we have to manage employees, manage contractors, manage workers, uh, or manage contacts of the employees, or manage the pending workers who are about to hire, or how to manage the uh, 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 HR administrators, how to manage the analysts. We get all kind of knowledge by this and uh, which will cover about manage self-service and employee self-service. Okay. Once we cover that, basically, then I'm going to talk about few additional tools which will be useful in any of the fission applications. One is OTBI, that is Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence Tool which is visually, visually rich tool, which we can uh, create uh, analytical reports in a visual manner, 
like we can create dashboards, we can create key performance indicator reports, we can create scorecards, we can create uh, 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 mobile specific dashboards, we can do many more things in the OTBI, which is a very powerful tool given out of the fusion applications. And also I'm going to talk about HSM extracts, which is another kind of odd integration tool to extract data out of the fusion applications, basically. That's what we do. And the last one in the core HR is extending the fusion applications. Basically, how we can extend the, uh, 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 how we can customize, how we can extend the fusion applications here. I will talk about various ways of uh, extending and customizing and personalizing the fusion applications. How we can do, what are the tools we have available? Uh, uh, what is a pace composer? What is an application composer? What is available in the human capital management to do? any specific customizations. Once you do the customizations, how do you migrate the customization from one instance to other instance? Along with that, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction of application development framework architecture, which is a core concept of creating any page into the Fusion applications. Though we won't be going in detail into that, but I'm gonna tell you what is the ADF, what are the typical components available in the ADF, and how it ADF can be used to develop any new page into the Fusion applications. Okay, so that's all comes under Core HR. Once we're done with the Core HR, then we are going to go to the other modules. One is the compensation module. I'm going to talk about what is compensation module and uh, uh, what is a I mean introduction about HSM workforce reports because workforce reports is a super module under which our cloud compensation falls into. And then I'm gonna give a brief introduction about what is compensation cloud and what are the features available in that. And I will talk about functional setup manager, which will is necessary to start implementing any module into in the cloud basically. So in the functional setup manager, how we typically start implementing the compensation module. And then I talk about what are the different navigations available in the compensation module. And I will talk about how the security is available in the compensation module. So these steps will be common in all the modules, either absence, payroll, advanced benefits, go to any module, these steps will be the common. We're gonna talk about under which super module this module is falling on, and what are the typical navigations, and what are the typical security reference models available into that specific sub module. And then we go with the typical configuration. What are the common steps to be done to implement the compensation configuration. And within the compensation model, we have the base compensation, individual compensation, workforce compensation. We're gonna talk about how we can configure the base compensation, individual compensation, and workforce compensation is a major one. We're gonna do that. And then we talk about total comp statements, nothing but once the workforce compensation is built, how we can create the total compensation statement so that we can deliver to the end user at any time, or we can deliver it at the end of the year, or we can deliver it as and when our comp cycle is completed. It's a compensation uh, module. And then you go to absence. Absence, again, we do the same thing. We talk about overview and administration. It overview and administration covers, again, all these three things, introduction, FSM, phase navigation, and security. And then we talk about the approval management in the absence, absence management configuration here, and for different fast formulas available in the absence plans, and uh, different types of absences available, and how we can implement each of the absence type into the fusion applications. And then we go to the payroll. Payroll again, we go to the payroll overview. Again, the same thing, which talks about the navigation, security, FSM. And then we talk about costing overview, what are the value sets, people give flex field, cost allocation flex fields. And again, we stress out importance of uses of legal address, legal entity, payroll saturation unit, legal employees, LRU, and legal jurisdictions into the payroll, basically. And then we talk about maintenance banks, maintenance payroll, maintenance elements, maintenance formulas, balances, duration, retro pay, payroll processes and then we talk about post payroll process most of our time into the session and this is all going to be covered into the payroll. The last one is advanced benefits. Advanced benefits typically used uh, 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 
mostly in the uh, US, US and also uh, into the European countries and also India also it's being used nowadays frequently basically which will talk about how we can provide the insurance benefits to the employees basically so here we're going to talk about the same introduction or you fsm navigation and security and then we talk about what is the benefits what are the typical configurations available in the advanced benefits module what are the typical building blocks of the benefits module how we can start with the program plan type plan and option configurations and how we can configure the rates and how we can administer uh, uh, the uh, benefits uh, module and uh, 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 how we can do the open enrollment it's actually we do it every year uh, end of every year to uh, start the open enrollment in the company and what are the benefit reports available and benefit code orders which is actually a little bit advanced concept in the benefits module so these are all the things which we are going to cover. It's actually coming 66 days. It's two months, but we are going to wrap it uh, uh, much earlier. Basically, once you do the core HR, people who are more interested into the core HR and technology, by this, they will know completely what has to be done as part of core HR implementation. It should be good enough to start with the implementations and everything is additional stuff. If you want to learn the additional modules, you can keep attending the trainings, but everything will be covered into the one training anyway. So uh, that's how we have we are we have categorized the whole classes. Okay, right. So any questions till now? Uh, Lakshmi, uh, this is Shiva. Yes, Shiva. So um, how about uh, payroll fast formulas? On our, like, are you going to spend more time on that or? So you are, you are talking about payroll specific fast formulas or HR specific fast formulas? Payroll, payroll. Okay. So what we are going to do, basically fast, we are going to fast formulas in all the four modules. So okay. people who, who don't know about fast formulas, fast formulas, nothing but it's not, it's not more of a, a, a programming a, a logic, programming construct, basically prior to the fusion in the e-business suit or other applications basically we have the ability to write a PL SQL code and we have the ability to call the PL SQL code or a java code or some other code from our custom applications or EBS applications in our programs but coming to the uh, cloud uh, we cannot call a PL SQL code so we have to heavily rely on the fast formulas for any programming construct Think of any programming construct like any if else condition, any for loop, any while loop. If you want to do any of that stuff, fast formula is the only go to do. So this fast formulas I'm going to cover in the core HR compensation because we are going to talk about when we do the configurations, we're going to talk about uh, some configurations need a programming constructs. Basically example, I wanted to say employees who are whose job has changed in this year is not eligible to receive bonus. That is I'm saying that my, my criteria is to, I want if any employee example, our company has uh, 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 every year we both pay the bonus. We are saying that if any employee changes from, let us say grade five to grade 10, they are not eligible to get the bonus. If that kind of logics has to be handled, then we have to rely on the eligibility fast formulas so basically those kind of fast formulas i'm going to cover in the compensation absence payroll advanced benefits everywhere i'm going to cover the fast formulas so i'm going to cover fast formulas everywhere how to use the fast formulas even advanced benefits also i'm going to cover the fast formulas okay. it will be everywhere and yeah payroll has more formulas being involved because it has more criteria being involved mm -hmm. absolutely we will we will we will stress we will stress more on payroll specific formulas whenever we discuss about it. So let's plan yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 just making sure. Thank you. Yes, we are going to cover it everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Be because we have a lot of uh, HCM in core HR background, mm -hmm. but we, I don't have my, uh, I came from finance, right? I don't have payroll. Uh, Understood. See, all these all this modules will be interconnected. Basically, once you implement any of these modules, you have to implement core HR. It is must. 
right right only then you can go with these modules and again if you see most of the components what i am talking here are reusable here example here i'm talking about legal entity here mm -hmm. and again i'm mentioning about legal entity here because here we'll be talk about in general when we go to the payroll we talk about in payroll how the legal entity is important how the legal reporting unit is important how these are all interlinked there we'll talk in detail actually so uh, yeah okay okay sir thank you right okay if doesn't if no no if we have any questions then i'm going to talk about introduction class okay okay so let me start okay so i'm using now i'm going to start a quick overview of the fusion applications basically what is fusion applications what is a fusion application architecture what are the different cloud deployment options available what is saas what is pas and we're getting started with the fusion application so these are the one two three four five the, these five components i'm going to talk about it today okay so it's more a generic uh, uh, session and uh, uh, anyone new to the cloud basically it is to begin with and uh, i'll talk uh, what are the components being involved into the cloud and all the things okay so what is a fusion application specifically so a fusion application can be best described is built on open standards based platform and also built on best business processes with and also it has a several deployment options what does it mean what do you mean by the open standards based platform what do you mean by open standards based platform is basically when fusion when oracle decided because fusion is a part fusion is actually oracle product right so oracle decided to implement a, a fusion so what they started doing they started buying out the best technologies in the market they started buying out best business processes available in the market and uh, they started combining all these things together and started developing their applications so one as a best technologies these are all the technologies what they bought out or what they had they had, they started developing the fusion application on top of these technologies oracle server oracle uh, uh, it's a web center portal web center portal where you can quickly create any web application web applications web logic server basically to to deploy any java based application any fusion of all fusion applications are java based to deploy any uh, java based applications we they use web logic server web center content if you wanted to your company wanted to store any kind of data any digital content or any kind of documents a single repository to store all your documents can be have web center content they also use jdeveloper jdeveloper is actually a tool through which you can develop fusion specific applications specifically if you want to create a page in the fusion application then you have to use jdeveloper or if you want to create a business new business processes you have to use geo developer and uh, geo developer is one tool and enterprise manager which actually keep checking the health check of all the applications together which will hold all applications together into one unit the enterprise manager and obie is a very powerful reporting tool which will have the bi publisher oracle transaction business intelligence tool OBIE tool all these reporting tools will be available in OBIEE it is also part of the fusion applications and identity management which will maintain the life cycle of the user when employee is created when employee is promoted what security should get employee when employee is terminated employee access should get terminated immediately all the user life cycle management will be handled in the identity management so basically these are all the tools on which this fusion applications is built so do we need to learn all these tools not necessarily in most of times in our classes we won't even look at these tools because 
we will be working more on the application side and we even though we don't know that we are using this tool but we'll be using that tool basically we won't we won't see the tool by the name but our the application when you start doing it internally you'll be consuming this tool and uh, i will i will remind you whenever you consume the tool i will tell you that at this point of time you are consuming identity management at this point of time you are using web center content so every tool has its importance and based on these tools basically oracle has built the application because of these open standards based tool you can do any configurations very quickly and most of the configurations are reusable basically any any if you create a page that page can be used basically you want to create the page in the in the in our classes why you want to create the page in our classes i'm going to tell you okay very soon so basically uh, uh, those pages are uh, those business processes those business logics are reusable and easy to maintain too it's all the technology coming to the processes previous to fusion oracle has oracle e business suit oracle bought people soft erp system too it bought jd edward feeble oracle on demand it bought all these applications and out of the all these applications whatever is the best process available let us say let us say hiring an employee hiring an employee every system will do on its own way so what oracle did out of all these processes what are all the best processes available they got all those processes together and kept it in the fusion applications that is why it is built on the best business processes that's what combination of all these tools to be together called as the fusion applications okay and deployed through selection of options what does it mean once you have the fusion any application will have right any anything in the application once you have the application where you have to install the application you want to install in your own company or oracle will install it for you in their servers or you will install it in some different cloud application cloud cloud basically so there are different deployment options given by the oracle one is public cloud basically oracle will maintain install your application somewhere and they will maintain it for you on premise on premise means you will be installing the application in your own company so your dbs your network team will maintain it private cloud private cloud in sense which Oracle again still install the application for you, but that application is available only to you and no one else can access it. What is no one else can access it? Why anyone else can access it? I will tell you what is that. Hybrid is some part of your application is installed on premise, some part of your application installed in the cloud, or Oracle will install it some part of the cloud basically. So there are various ways of installation options given for the fusion applications what what installation option you want to choose it's your choice for every choice there's a cost involved behind that basically I'll, i'm going to talk about the deployment options in next three four slides okay so let me quickly go through the quick architecture for any application we have the front end user interface right from through which you can access the application and there is a server on which application is installed and you will access it and database server right so like this fusion also has three parts number one oracle fusion application product families oracle fusion application product families in sense basically on which you will be you will be uh, uh, accessing the application you will access the oracle product family and all the fusion application will be in all the product families will be installed in the fusion middleware that is the fusion application server think of like that and database is oracle database because it's oracle product so what is the oracle product family what i mean by oracle product family is see that so these are all the different product families given by the oracle okay so human capital management is a product family so human capital management means it's all hr specific products is available in the human product human capital management product family enterprise planning structure erp sorry enterprise plan, resource planning erp erp is a product family 
which will have all these products under it supply chain management enterprise performance management customer experience industry solutions internet of things adaptive intelligence application functional setup manager analytics dashboards kpis and extensibility framework these are all the different product families which typically you access from the front end basically that's what you're going to access okay out of all these product families our whole concentration is on human capital management human capital management is a product family which we are going to learn and under the human capital management we have a sub products called the global human resources talent management workforce rewards workforce management work life solutions hcm cloud for mid search what does each module will contain we'll talk about that when we talk about hcm cloud or you okay these are all the sub modules so in our classes we're going to learn about hcm human capital management product family after the product family they're going to learn about global hub and resources for sure and we are going to learn about few products out of this is number one okay and along with this we are also going to learn about functional setup management product family and also we're going to learn about analytics dashboards kpis and extensibility framework so we're going to learn about these two so you go all about human capital management fsm and analytics we are the three modules which we are going to learn in our sessions as part of the functionality okay so remaining all basically if it is erp more into financials supply chain management and enterprise performance management and crm sales industry solutions internet of things these are all basically out of all these things, internet of things is one other very very powerful tool coming up uh, uh, nowadays and it's going to demand a lot in the future which is more into machine learning and artificial intelligence and tap that machine learning and using in our fusion applications one example is iot asset monitoring if we have an asset in your warehouse or if you have an asset within the company example if you want to track that you have the amount necessary amounts of assets that are available or not or you are out of the stock of the assets how do you know that if you have a chip attached to the asset and if we keep monitoring the chip and know that okay there some our asset is available there and we can keep the count of that asset at one one place and if the count is out of our estimated count then typically we are out of the resource i'm just giving an example basically so machine learning is coming into the internet of things basically which we are not going to cover but i will talk about uh, some use cases on that okay next and again every module example let us say erp module they have in erp we have financials revenue management account hub like that everything will have their sub modules basically so let us talk about human capital management human capital management we have the global human resources talent management workforce management workforce rewards work life solutions right so in that talent management we have a recruiting we have an onboarding we have a performance management we have careers and succession planning management learning management these are all the sub modules and similarly for workforce management we have a time and labor absence management project portfolio management and expense management workforce rewards we have the payroll compensation benefits sales compensation and work life solution we have my brand reputation management my wellness my volunteering my competitions out of this what we are going to learn we're going to learn about global human resources and in the talent management sorry so in the workforce management we're going to learn about absence management in the workforce rewards we're going to learn about, about payroll compensation and benefits basically these are all the modules we are going to learn and remaining all are out of scope and again here when i take human capital management you know you are going to learn global human resources we learned about these four hcm cloud for mid size what does it mean typically the reason i mentioned it here it's part of licensing when you want to buy a product from oracle let us say if you want to buy a product from oracle oracle will say you can you can buy the talent management you can buy the workforce management within the workforce management you can choose which one you want to buy you will say that okay i want to buy time and labor 
no, I want to buy apps and management alone. I wanted to buy expense management, something like that. So you can choose out of the model which one you wanted to buy. It's your choice. Some companies, what Oracle has done, maybe buying a time and labor is too much costly or buying the payroll is too much costly. So what Oracle has done, some medium companies are, are small size companies. What they did, they bundled list of modules together into one set of modules and say that, hey, take this one, take this bundle plan. We will give it, we'll give it for less discounts. Basically had some cloud for mid size, nothing but combination of several uh, combination of several modules for lesser price. That's the only difference basically. So nothing to worry on that. Okay. So this is the different uh, supports available in the human capital management. That's what we're going to learn. Okay. Coming to the fission middleware, basically we have, I will quickly show you, we have two components available in the fission middleware. One is fission middleware components for fission applications. Second thing is fission middleware components. Why these two? When I say fission middleware, fission middleware not necessarily to be used only for the fission applications. What are the fission applications? These product families. It's not necessary that fission middleware has to be used only for this product families. It's not necessary. It means you can create your own custom applications and deploy into the fission middleware. You can have your fission middleware to run a different application. You can do that. Fission middleware, it's not necessary, it always has to be used only for the fission product families. It can be used for any other custom applications too. That's why Oracle, what the Oracle will do, Oracle can also sell the Oracle Fission Middleware separately. They don't say that you no need to have the Oracle Fission product families for that. You can buy a separate Fission Middleware for you basically, right? That's why Fission Middleware will be, ha I have given it two ways. One is Fission Middleware components for Fission applications product families. Other one is a fission middleware components means fission middleware components, nothing but generic components which can be used by product families are also for your own custom products basically. So in the fission middleware infrastructure components for fission application, there are three parts. One is what I call fission middleware extensions for applications. Means if you have fission application, if you want to extend the fission application, Extend the fission application means as part of the fission application or a fission product family, what Oracle has given some functionalities. Let us say uh, Oracle has example, let us say Oracle talent management or workforce rewards is there. After workforce rewards, a workforce payroll is given. Payroll is some set of business processes available in the payroll. So as part of the business processes, example, Oracle has given 100 fields to you say that these are all the list of fields which we can use in the application for some reason these hundred fields are not 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 are not, not accommodating your company requirements you want to create a new fields then that is called extending the application or maybe sometimes oracle has given a screen if you say if you wanted to see the payslip your, your payslip, it is a screen, how it looks like. Maybe that screen you wanted to add another field or in that screen you want to hide some, some, some sections or you want to hide some regions. Means you have to modify what is given out of the application, right? In that case, basically what you need to do, you have to modify the user interface or you have to add additional fields. These modifications of the application or addition of a new fields, these two will be stored on the fission middleware as part of the fission middleware extensions for applications. That's how it will be stored. Okay, that's number one. And number two, Oracle Enterprise Scheduler. Again, I'm going to talk about how this can happen, how these extensions will happen. What are the flex fees? We're going to talk about that in detail at a later point of time. Okay, don't worry about that. Just try to understand the meaning of it. Okay, don't worry about how it can be done. We will talk about it later. Oracle Enterprise Scheduler. 
what is enterprise scheduler enterprise scheduler nothing but in any company we have to schedule some jobs we have to run jump some jump jobs every night example let us say every night you wanted to send your employee empl whatever employee has joined in your company that employee data has to be sent to your custom application or your uh, 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 on premise application or to salesforce example to send to a different application salesforce so every night what should happen a report has to be run we should pull all the employee joined on the day take the data create a file a csv file or text file or dat file what of create a file and send the file to the salesforce server example i'm saying or send that file to the uh, your custom application or send the file to your e business suit so we have delivered the file to that respect to ftp site example so that action should happen every day then how do you schedule a job that is called enterprise scheduler where you can define schedule and run the jobs so this scheduling happens company by company my company want to run the job every night or my company new hire report has 10 fields other company report can have 30 fields we don't know so every comp every company will go and define their own schedules right that's why this oracle enterprise scheduler resides in the middle where where we can go and do all the all the schedules definitions and running the jobs here it all comes under middleware and third thing is oracle enterprise crawl and search framework so we will be using it this very very frequently in our applications basically uh, this made okay for if we, if if i talk a little bit about the background if you see if anyone from the e business suit background or other applications basically what happens in that case is let us say if you if you go and tell to someone saying that hey can you go and create a job then that developer or that consultant should know the navigations where to go to create a job they should know what responsibility they have to go they should know what menu they have to go what is the function name they have they should know that without knowing that it is very difficult for a typical uh, uh, legacy developer or a business suit or any other developer to do that but in case of fusion applications what they have done they have given one set screen where what you can you can just go and type it type saying that create job then what happens based on the create and job keywords it will get all the list of screens what are available with the create job keywords then typically anyone can search for the create job keyword and go to that specific screen and create a job it's very simple how it is achievable it is achievable to the oracle enterprise crawl and search framework it is part of escf where you can allow search finch functionality in every oracle fusion product we will be seeing that anyway we will be using it very very frequently it's part so these three things comes under fusion middleware infrastructure component for fusion applications and next thing is fusion middleware components these components are being used by both oracle product families and as well as your own custom applications if you have a proper licensing so this is all the products which are available as part of the fusion middleware basically application development framework where you use jira developer oracle sova oracle identity management obiee oracle data integrator oracle secure enterprise search oracle web center portal web center content http server web gateway wsm policy manager web logic communication services all these th are available on the oracle web logic server and all these components can talk together using oracle enterprise management fusion applications control you no need to know all these things because we are really not going more into the technology of the fusion middleware because all our concentration is how human capital management module do work and what are the human capital management uh, how human capital management interact with the fusion middleware components to get the work done so we will be concentrating more on to that so you no need to worry on the middleware components if you are interested we can have it in a separate sessions okay and this oracle enterprise manager also make sure that fusion 
Oracle Fusion Middleware Infrastructure Components or Fusion Applications talks to the Fusion Middleware Components and the healthy connection is established. That's what it is. And the last one is the database. So Oracle Database has two schemas. You know database, right? Any that I think everyone is aware of the how uh, ER, ER, uh, uh, ER databases will work, right? So basically our Oracle database, Fusion database has two schemas. One is Oracle Fusion application schema. Other one is Oracle Fusion middleware schema. What does it mean? All our product families, what are our product families we spoke about, right? All of our uh, uh, Fusion product families, all these product families will be available into the uh, Fusion application schema basically application schema and all the all these fission middleware components will be available in the fission middleware schemas basically so even if you create if you deploy your own custom application of fission middleware components it will be available in the fission middleware schemas basically these are two schemas available for us and we will be using the fission application schemas most of time to access any data basically right so if we combine all the product families and then fission middleware and then database together, it is how it looks like basically. So all these things will talk together using the Oracle Enterprise Management module. Here we have the application control, enterprise management database control, enterprise manager grid control. So it is how it does look like basically. Okay, so it is architecture. Now, I will talk more about. Uh, uh, um, okay, let me show you that. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you, I want to talk to you about cloud deployment options basically. So I want to talk about what is SaaS, what is PaaS, what is IaaS. So you'll be hearing about this SaaS, PaaS, IaaS components very very frequently so if you are if you are into the cloud technologies not necessary it's a fusion applications it can be any cloud technologies you will be hearing about the SaaS, PaaS, and IAS components very very frequently so what is this what is this terminology and how you can relate to your company specific state and how you have to decide uh, the future state how does it look like before talking any of this SaaS, PaaS, IAS, I will talk about my software package. What is my software package? So I would say my software package, so forget about these three things together. My software package, any application, any software, it will have some list of components, right? The first thing, this virtualization, servers, storage, networking, all these belongs to the physical structure physical structure basically in unique anything basically infrastructure physical infrastructure this physical infrastructure is necessary in any company to run any application you need, you need, you need networking you need storage you need servers you need to if you if you have a huge volume of the data you have to virtualize the servers basically we need these four components together in any other company to run the application yes that's true that's why my software package has this four and then what is next to run any application we need to have operating system windows or linux or unix or whatever we need to have an operating system right yes then we should have operating system and with operating system we need to have operating system and any company Along with the operating system, we can install the application directly or if it is a homogeneous company or bigger company, then typically we should need a middleware too. So middleware, runtime, operating system, these three are necessary to run the application. Assume that, right? These three are necessary. These are all part comes under operating system or middleware. That's true. And then what we need to have, we need to have database. We need to have a database to, to store your data. And then we need to have your application. That is how any software package do work. Now, with the growing, uh, uh, with the growing technology or trending technology, whatever we say, then what happened? Various companies coming up with the various kind of options. Some companies says that, 
hey we will provide you this all the hardware whatever hardware is here we will provide you the hardware whatever operating systems data application you wanted to do what you can do we will provide all this hardware either you can buy a hardware for us or we can use our hardware and you can come to our hardware and install whatever you wanted to install your operating systems database application and maintain it if anything happens to the networking or storage or servers we are responsible we will pay for you we will take care of the ownership we will maintain it with that what happens networking our networking administration job is gone because no need to maintain our network team here okay our no need to maintain our network team here because all the network administration is done by a uh, done by the vendor or someone else then that kind of service is called infrastructure as a service they are providing an infrastructure to us and they are offering infrastructure as a service that is why it is red in color managed by the vendor okay if you are if you want to move your software package to infrastructure service platform it means this network this hardware is given by the vendor and they will take care of the maintenance all you need to maintain is this middleware and this application and data this kind of thing is infrastructure as a service and other thing is some people will say along with the infrastructure we will give you the middleware you can use my middleware tools what are middleware tools are available example whatever middleware tools that i have given to given is available to us let us say i have this oracle will say that i have this middleware tools these are all the middleware tools application development framework where you can develop any of your uh, application using application development framework or you can use the reporting tool or you can use the data integrator to do the etl extract transform load operations from one system to another system or you can use my web center portal to maintain your uh, digital content or web content whatever it is sorry Uh, web center ka portal to create your internal website external websites or your uh, microsites whatever you want it you can create using web center portal web center content where you can maintain your data digital content or http server where we can uh, we can uh, establish we can uh, we can make the application as a web application and make other people to access your application from outside world so these are all the middleware components will be given out of the box and they will say that what you can do you can go ahead and use my middleware components and you can install your own database and your own application so that uh, uh, these two things will be maintained by you remaining everything will be offered by us so if anything happens to the application or data it is your responsibility if anything happens to the middleware component or anything it is our responsibility so this is called platform as a service okay the last one is software as a service what do we mean by software as a service is even the application and data is also maintained by them we cannot maintain it it is also maintained by them and uh, everything will be maintained by them and all you need to do is use it you cannot change any of it because you are not managed by you it is not managed by you it is managed by the vendor all these things are managed by the vendor so that nothing can be changed whatever given out of the box use it if anything uh, is not out of the box you cannot use it right so that is called software as service okay so all our fusion product families what our fusion product families will learned all these fusion product families are saas components saas components basically it means whatever is given out of the product family you have to use it if you want to modify it you cannot modify it but there is a way to enhance your functionality there is a way for that what is the way for that we should go for the pass if you want to customize any processes at at some extent in the software as service we can modify the application at some extent but if you want to customize the application to a much much more way then you have to go with the platform as a service model okay we'll talk about that now based on this kind of service you choose 
the deployment options will come. Number one, public cloud. In the public cloud, what is happening here? Company A, company B, company C, company D, and company E all are using the same data center. It means all are accessing the same application. But what Oracle will do, you can access the application, but data will, whatever data you are accessing, that data is visible of company A data is visible for company A only, company B data visible for company B only, and A, B, C, D, E. Data visibility will be their own company, but they will access same application. Example, WhatsApp. In your phone, you have WhatsApp. And I can also see WhatsApp in my phone. Your WhatsApp functionality works like same WhatsApp functionality. What is it? My phone, both are exactly the same. But what differs? Data differs. Your WhatsApp shows your data and my WhatsApp shows my data. But that WhatsApp is maintained by the company, right? that Google company. And they will maintain it and uh, they will update it. They will do the patches. They will take care of responsibility. If any issue happens, they will they are responsible for that. That is called SaaS application. Software, service, everything is managed by the vendor. All you need to do, you can go and access it. That is one example of public cloud. Public cloud is a cloud, but basically application is same, but data is different. It is being accessed like that. Maybe company A say that no, 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 it's not good, it's not secure. I don't want like that. That's not it, won't don't work for me. I won't believe in the security. What I can give a signed agreement about the security, but still for a company, I don't want that. Our company A will say that, no, what our functionality is given it, I want to modify the functionality. It doesn't work. I need to modify the functionality. If I need to modify the functionality, can, can A can do modify the functionality here? If the functionality is modified on the application, it is going to impact every other company. Don't work. So what it will do, Company A will say that, okay, as I need to modify the functionality, I want to have my own application. This is the private cloud. I want to have my own application, own data center, only my A will, will be accessing it. So this private cloud can be pass or can be IAS, can be both basically. Company A can say that I want my own application, but still you can, I will maintain your hardware and operating middleware, but I want to have my own application, my database, then they have to go with the platform as service, and typically they'll go to private cloud. Or they can go with the infrastructure as service too. They will take only infrastructure, and they can install everything into there. That is what it is, private cloud. And next thing is data center on-premise. You say that, okay, give me the application, give me all the thing I will install on my on-premise on and I will maintain on my own. That is called data center on-premise. If they maintain on their own, then typically what happens here, uh, 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 if anything, maybe they, can buy the, maybe they can buy the hardware or they won't even buy the hardware. They will just buy the Fission application or Fission middleware components and install it here. Any patches, any any upgradations, any patches, any outages, everything has to be maintained by our company network team or company database administrator team or company people only. No one else can maintain that. So these are all different components available out of the Fission application. SaaS, PaaS, and IES, and deployment options. And the SaaS application, as I said, these are all the SaaS applications available. These are all the SaaS product families available, basically. Okay, so uh, uh, how do we, how do you see that? If you go to, let us say, let's go like this. So let's go like this cloud.oracle.com oh. and it's a cloud.oracle.com is opening up 
think it's a little slow. Okay, see that it is a cloud.oracle.com. There are three things, software as service, platform as service, infrastructure as service. So which one you wanted to buy? Basically, software as service, platform as service, infrastructure as service. Software as service can also be called as applications here. It is application SaaS, and it is platform, it is infrastructure, these three things. In the SaaS, basically, as I said, all the product families comes in the SaaS, SaaS platform. As, as, uh, as, uh, software as service, basically. It means they built the software to us, we have to use it. They built the products for us. They built the global human resources software. They have built the talent management software or application. All we need to, we have to use it. Okay, that is software as service. Next, if you wanted to enhance the functional example, you want to create your own, along with the global human resources, what our Oracle is offering, it is an application. Think of an application, basically. So the, along with the application, think of a WhatsApp. It's an application, like the HR is an application. In the WhatsApp, maybe you want to create one more feature. Maybe you want to create one more, uh, uh, want to create one more icon on top of WhatsApp. Maybe you wanted to modify that page, the look and feel of the page, or something like that. Or maybe you wanted to modify the functionality. When someone clicks on send a message, automatically someone else should receive a Notification saying that hey person A sent a message to person B example and saying the process has to be changed in those cases You have to go for the platform and what you wanted to do there. You wanted to do the application development The application development or you want to do something specific to mobile or specific to blockchain or specific to uh, 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 Application container or specific to the integration So what you are planning to do based on that you have to choose one platform Platform basically, as I said, it's a middleware. In the middleware, in the middleware, what middleware you wanted to buy? As I said in my previous class, these are all the middleware components. Out of all these middleware components, which one you wanted to use? Basically, that's why this platform will have all the components available here. Okay, and the infrastructure, it's all only infrastructure like networking, storage, compute, all those things will be available here basically it's all the infrastructure so maybe it's a little bit unclear to you i understand don't worry maybe once again i am going to talk about this in the middle of my session somewhere again i'll talk about sas pass and ies which maybe by that point of time you might get some understanding on that i'm just showing you how does it looks like but don't worry about that i will come back to you and again say you what is sas pass and ies okay so with that i'll hold for now and uh, 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 tomorrow we'll start about HCM Cloud overview. How the HCM Cloud? Uh, typically, I'll talk about this uh, HCM product family. How the HCM product family looks like, and uh, uh, what we are going to learn in the HCM product family. And we'll start with the uh, 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 typical implementation process and uh, how we typically begin the implementation of any cloud application. What is the beginning email you receive from Oracle? From there, how do you start developing the cloud applications? Okay, so with that, I will hold it for now. If you have any questions, let me know. Else, uh, we can meet at the same time uh, um, and discuss further. Okay, I got a message. Just uh, Madan has sent me, just wanted to know if any sort of coding knowledge is needed like SQL. It's very good question. Yes, so uh, basically two, there are two things. If you wanted to more into the uh, 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 functional or technical, basically more into the technical, basically SQL is must. You should know SQL because uh, to extract data out of the cloud, basically you, uh, as which is Oracle database, we should know SQL to write SQL queries to pull out pull the data out of the application. But we still can extract data without writing SQL code too. There is a ways for that. Oracle has given enough configurations to extract data out of the systems without writing any SQL code. It's not necessary. If you know that as writing SQL code, it is much useful to you. But uh, we can do that. That is one thing. And second thing, basically, functional or technical person, one thing in HCM should know is the fast formulas. How should write the fast formula and uh, how should uh, 
use the fast formulas because as i said we cannot write call any pl sql code or java code like that we have to rely on the fast formulas to write most of the programming construct it is good to know that again without trying without having fast formula also we can do some configurations at some extent if beyond that we need fast formula knowledge that is another thing and uh, these are two things what i could see and if you want to pursue more into the technology more into technical integrations or technical consultant or more into the technical aspects of inbound integrations outbound integrations then typically you should you should know more little more little more about web services that is good very useful because uh, you should know how to interact with the cloud because cloud is available somewhere which is not, which should beyond our on premise if you want to interact with someone which is available somewhere in the cloud we should know the web services that is more important if you want to pursue more into the technology side basically so those three things i can view remaining all are tools basically has some data loader extracts or otbi or uh, 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 spreadsheet data loader these are remaining our tools actually which we will be learning anyway in our session so and let me suggest here so uh, what is uh, like uh, are you going to take 2 hours every day or 1 hour so initially it will be 1 hour 30 minutes okay so subsequently uh, uh, we'll be increasing it to 2 hours okay okay yeah so the first week i think like uh, i won't be able to join uh, okay. for whole hour because like uh, i have uh, at a hard stop at 7 no okay. uh, Um, you send the recordings so 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 the thing what happened was like there was a delay last time mm -hmm. to get the recording so i was not able to follow the training okay i like say like if i i, I cannot go like i, I think like uh, ravi uploaded some other training the problem with that is like i won't be able to follow your class next day right that's true that's true so yeah i will work with ravi to see like uh, if we can um, upload on the same day okay okay and i will also uh, ask you to check with ravi once from your side too okay yeah yeah anyway i need I to will, uh, i will uh, send in uh, respond to your email other one okay okay yeah other one please okay yeah, sure. okay that and uh, I, and uh, yeah yeah i will tell you like and uh, yeah, yeah. okay that these two things are separate that one is company and this one is okay, okay. Sure. okay. yeah thank you okay take care okay. okay so okay uzwala do we deploy any technical report on on cloud during our training yes absolutely we are going to do that we are going to create a handful of reports in our classes and also we are going to uh, um test few outbound reports too yes absolutely we are doing to do that me yeah, i have one more question yep uh, this is ujwala yes, so ujwala. Uh, yeah go ahead so Uh, during our training, you do this function because we are new to this HCM and uh -huh. we do not know any functional setup. So we get an instance to do all these yeah. setups. Yes. Yes. Often indeed. and uh, uh, what is the medium to connect to you uh, in case we are having any challenges during this? No. So basically, yes, you will be getting an instance to do the practice, and uh, all you need is a browser. Any browser is good enough. to do the practice all we will be giving a url to you and use the url and uh, view the you use the username password given to you just access the application it will work so you don't need any other tools to uh, uh, access the application all you need to you all need to have a browser basically firefox is good or you can use ie and uh, chrome as well uh, to do the practice sessions while the session goes while the training goes i will talk about uh, three four tools basically which you have to download and install it i am going to train you on that how to download it or how i will send you the plugins how to install it so subsequently uh, i will i will i will give you that if for further training so further sessions uh, to do the practice but basically at the beginning all you need is a url and username and password that's it okay yeah and internet connection that's important But during uh, you know if you want to replicate the scenarios like you said you create a company and all that yeah we try to replicate ourselves offline uh -huh. so if we have any challenges during any of the setups that we come across uh, so you would what is a medium to get in touch with you it's through email or 
Yes, so I am going to share my email. And uh, um, first thing, end of the class, we are going to open up the Q&A session. So at that time, we can clarify. And uh, if it is something uh, really gets stuck and uh, some, some step is missing or something really an issue, and typically you can contact me with an email and uh, I will respond to you and help you out uh, to go through. And for the hypothetical company, yes, you could able to create your own company too, maybe with your uh, uh, initials. Sorry? No, I have just given an example. It could be any setup, right? During a payroll or... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Any functional setup. So yes, email is a communication The uh, if it cannot be resolved after the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's it. No problem. Okay. Okay, then uh, if no more questions, then we can uh, meet uh, tomorrow at the same time and continue. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.